Have you ever watched Ida? If not, just stay here and continue listening. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. Ida is a 2013 drama film directed by Paul Polowski and written by Polonsky and Rebecca Lenkiewicz. Set in Poland in 1962, it follows a young woman on the verge of taking woes a Catholic nun, orphaned as an infant during the German occupation of World War II. She must meet her hand and former communist state prosecutor and only surviving relative, who tells her that her parents were Jewish. The two women embark on the road trip into the Polish countryside to learn the fate of their family. In a majestic covent, an orphan young woman, a novice named Anna, is ordered by her mother's superior to visit her aunt-in-law before he takes order. A beautiful, 18 years old with a broad slug face, a composed devotional manner, and the tantalizing temple the girl has never left the convent before and knows nothing of her family. In lots wearing her habit, Anna enters an apartment of a 45-ish woman who is puffing on a cigarette and waiting for the guy she picked up the night before to leave, a minor state judge and communist party member. Wanda Gratz tells her niece that her real name is Ida Lebenstein and that she is a Jewish. A Jewish nun, she says. Abrupt and demissive, Wanda enjoys attacking the girl's ignorance, but Wanda has mysteries of her own discourse to settle. Ida's mother was her beloved sister. The two agreed to go to the village in which the parents were hidden by Christmas and betrayed the village where Wanda grew up. Ida became both an investigation of sorts of internment road movie, featuring the directly opposed old couple, Catholic and communist, innocent girl and hard living political intellectual lover of Chris and hater of the Polish past, yes, neither is a type, and what happens to each has to be understood as both an individual faith and a Polish faith. It does faith and discipline simplify with the justice by experience, and one as will be tasted too as her own buried sorrows come back to life. Sardonic comedy lurks with this strange pairing. At first, Wanda can stop taunting in the in defense to sex and about the village to say, What if go there and discover that there is no God? Yet Polonsky does not favor on point of view over the other. The two women are equal in their isolation and their need to pull together. She shares the identify in the country that has been almost entirely broken. Between 1939 and 1945, Poland lost a fifth of its population, including 3 million Jews. In the two years after the war, communists took over the government under the eyes of the Red Army and the Soviet sacred Poles, and Nikiwid, many Poles, were prominent in resisting the Nazis were accused of preparation crimes. The independent minded were shot on hanging. In the movie, none of this is started by all of its bull to speak into the atmosphere. The country feels dead, the population spreads the mood of ordinary conversations contained by sure knowledge that many who survived have committed acts of betrayal of English while for ignorance. How can you capture a nation's spirit by telling a singular story? By making every shot as definition as an icon? I am not emotionally excited by the power of cinema's tricks anymore, Polonsky has said. The director and his fleeting cinematographer, Lucas Zal, shot the movie in hard focus black and white. They have produced images so distant and powerful that they sharpen our sense. Ida may be called static, were it not the currents of emotion from shot to shot which electrify the woman's relations to each other thoughts, clearing away chatter, Polonsky almost never moves the camera, many of sense are just long-lasting shots fed by a single light source, 
that often pulls the faces in a partial shadow. Sometimes the figures are positioned at the bottom of the frame with enormous grey polished skies about them as if the entire burden of the cure's country weighed on its people. Both beautiful and oppressive, the blackness of the landscape in winter suggests something uncanny in the air, as if we are watching horror film without calls. Few recent films can claim as a visual approach as striking as that which cinematographers Luca Zal and Real Rizard Lensky give Aida. Filmed in the unusual box aspect ratio of and most often deployed in starting load shots, the film's image sometimes suggests warmer lighting with the color taken away and the composition managed to seem at once classical and overhanded with the subjects often located in the screen's two bottom quadrants. As impressive the effect is to draw the viewer's eye into the beauty of the image while simulationally maintaining a competitive distance from the drama. Polovsky and Lenkiewicz's scripting provides similarly Lipiridaria. Besides its took, Ida most recalls the manner of bygone art films in the modernist spreads and foregoing obliquences of its writing. Very little is stated directly, instead we glean things from casual remarks and subtle suggestions. Somehow the technique of inference makes the film eventual revolution feel both more integral and more powerful. Because revelation to come despite the quest's languorous wraiths and the touch of arguably the darkest and most troubling chapter in modern Poland's history, what happened to Anna's parents? Most films that approach this horrific area envision jackpotted armies and West industrial execution sites. But in Poland in the 40s, as in Cambodia in, in the 70s, and in Nerada in the 19th, several authors could be one's friends and neighbors, and simple firm implements its instruments. In touching on this reality, either it's something to a subject that sometimes seems to have lost the ability to disturb us as it should in movies. Called a compact masterpiece and an early beautiful road movie, the film has also been said to contain a cosmos of pure violence and pain, even if certain historical events remain unsaid. None of this is stated by all of it is put so to speak into the atmosphere, the country feels dead, the population spurs. Ida won the 2015 Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, becoming the first Polish film to do so. It had earlier been selected as Best Film of 2014 by European Film Academy and as Best Film Not in the English Language of 2014 by British Academy of Film and Television Arts. In 2016, the film was named as the 50th best film of the 21st century from a pool of 177 films. Thank you for listening and keep in touch.